September 29th, 2022. I uploaded my first ever video on Ultra Kill, giving my first impressions on the game, with just a mere three hours of gameplay. <laughs> As expected, everyone in the comments section was roasting the living shit out of my style and giving me some tips on how to actually get good at the same time. Thank you, Ultra Kill community. I appreciate that. Ever since I uploaded that video, I've been getting a ton of comments asking me to do a versus video between Ultra Kill and Doom Eternal. Being that my channel got to this level with my Doom content, and being that Ultra Kill has been called Doom Eternal on a budget more times than I died to Gabriel, I think it's a good time to finally sit down, take a deep breath, and see which one of these games is superior. Quick disclaimer, my friends if you enjoy one of these games more than the other, power to you. You are fucking awesome. This video is entirely subjective and from my point of view, so take that in mind when watching it. Now let's do something I did on my last Ultra Kill video. If this video reaches 5000 likes, I'll make a horny Ultra Kill video, because for some reason the Ultra Kill community is incredibly horny, so I think that will be really interesting. Leave a like right now. Normally I wouldn't make these types of videos. Compared games to see which one is better is just a complete waste of time. Even if it's between Halo, Call of Duty and Battlefield, even if all those games are first person shooters, they all try to achieve different things and play entirely different from one another. So there's no point on even trying to compare them at all. Like I said, it's a complete waste of time. But this shit is exception. Why? Because it's Ultra Kill and Doom Eternal, two of the most highly rated FPS games of all time. Two games that play like if Devil May Cry was a first person shooter in steroids. They both have demons, they both fight angels, they both have an unstoppable protagonist that heals himself if he bats in the blood of his enemies. And they both play extremely similar. Even if one is a AAA game made by a complete studio and the other is made by just one person. Music, graphics, lore, gameplay, we're taking all of this into account to decide which game is worth your hard-earned money. So grab your super shotgun, Groovy. throw a coin into the air, and let's parry our way straight into this mess. But before we begin, this video is sponsored by Gamersubs. Only the true giga chats of the FPS community drink this shit, so use code MIDNIGHT to get 10% off your order. Thanks to you, every day we're getting closer on getting our own flavor that being Spartan Piss. Thank you for that. I mean it. Let's get on with the video. First, let's talk about the graphics. Ultra Kill was developed by RC Hakita Patala on the Unity engine. Yes, this game was made on Unity. What captivates me so much about the aesthetic of Ultra Kill is just how it looks so PlayStation 1 graphics from the 1990s. One of the first consoles I owned and still have to this day is the original PlayStation. Here. What? with a copy of Spyro inside of it. I was searching for this game, what the fuck? I played this baby like if there was no tomorrow back in the golden age of gaming. So watching Ultra Kill's incredibly fast and responsive gameplay rock this beautiful aesthetic just makes me appreciate this game even more. It even has a filter that makes the game look even more janky and that's canon to the lore. And I absolutely love it. The art direction from the spaces you play in, the monsters you shoot, and even the bosses you fight is just a pleasure to see, especially the bosses. I just love how authentic and original they all look. Just goes to show you that your game doesn't need to have fancy graphics to make it to the top, but a well thought out art direction. Aesthetic wise, Ultra Kill is a masterpiece. Talking about fancy graphics, Doom Eternal teaches everyone how to implement fancy, over-the-top, next-level futuristic graphics into its gameplay. I still do not understand to this day how this game is able to run butter smooth with this amount of shit going on at the same time. The guys at id Software are freaking wizards. You're a wizard, Harry. I'm a what? Harry. 
You're a wizard. What I love about Eternals aesthetics is just how gruesome, realistic and goofy it can look all at the same time. Demons have a pretty distinguishable color palette that separates them from the bunch. Even from afar or in the midst of battle, you can see from the corner of your eye which demon is near you just by its color. In my book, that is the textbook definition of a good art direction. And in a game like Doom Eternal, where having eyes in the back of your head is a necessity, this design choice is just divine intervention. Still, I do prefer the retro style 90s graphics over the ones in the present. And I don't know, maybe it's because I was born in the 90s, so... Yeah, but in no way, shape, or form does that take credit away on just how fucking good looking Doom Eternal is. Aesthetic wise, Doom Eternal is also a masterpiece. ETEC 7 is just a beauty of an engine. Now, let's talk about the lore. Ultra Kill, and I'm surprised by saying this because I had no idea whatsoever, has a pretty deep story that nobody on the Ultra Kill community has able to fully understand to this day. And with every update, the story expands even more. Here are some of the things that are factual in the universe of Ultra Kill. Mankind is dead, blood is fuel, hell is full. You play as V1, a robot built by mankind specifically for war. Because of this, V1 rocks an exterior thin plating that allowed refueling through contact with blood. Because of the thinness of his armor, V1 is rather fragile for a war machine, yet the ability to fix itself and rebuild the broken parts by having contact with blood farly outweighs the negatives on an active battlefield. At least that's how the codex describes it. In this universe, God exists, but has gone missing, and in his absence, the angels of heaven have created a council to act as God's will. After the fall of mankind, V1 had to make a choice, starve to death or jump straight into hell to kill demons to survive. And that's pretty much everything I know so far. If this video receives a ton of support, I will make a detailed timeline on everything we know about the lore of Ultra Kill. So if you haven't already, leave a huge like. When I was reading through the terminals, I was just amazed on how crazy good the lore of this game is, god damn it. And it is still being expanded with each update Hakita releases. I am all in on the Ultra Kill lore train. The lore of Ultra Kill is very similar to the one of Doom Eternal, but instead of fighting demons and angels just for the sake of surviving through blood consumption, the lore of Doom follows Doom Guy in an effort to protect humanity from the evil dimension assimilating claws of Hell. In Doom, Hell is an interdimensional conqueror that assimilates dimensions into its own. It basically absorbs them for the sake of using the souls of living things, in this case humans, as a source of energy to create Argent energy, something that the gods of Doom have called the will of the universe. And in New Doom, Hell has its sights centered on humanity, with Doom Guy being the only one capable of stopping this from happening, thanks to him having the power of God himself. There's actually a cool theory circling around about Ultra Kill that states that V1 is God's vessel and is on making or killing everything he, God, has created to start anew. I do not know if this is true, I still need to read hundreds of paragraphs and connect all the dots to create a distinguishable timeline about Ultra Kill. Yet, I absolutely love the lore of both of these games. It's absolutely amazing. The Doom soundtrack will always have a special place on my heart. Mick Gordon managed to create the perfect playlist to pump some iron, and being that I have been listening to metal music since I was a baby, I just cannot say anything bad about this masterpiece of his soundtrack. Yet, Ultra Kill soundtrack is interesting. On one instance, you are listening to some calm melodies that would definitely play on a stairway to heaven, and then all of a sudden it turns into a meat grinding machine where everything that matters is bathing on the blood of your foes. Not gonna lie, Ultra Kill made me a fan of Breakcore, and both soundtracks definitely fit the game aesthetics perfectly. But now, let's talk about the gameplay. It surprises me how both of these games can have 
have very similar gameplay mechanics and at the same time be completely different. Both Ultra Kill and Doom Eternal approach its gameplay as if it was Devil May Cry, Bayonetta, Ninja Gaiden, God of War and basically any other hack and slash game where having a graceful, angelic style matters. In Doom Eternal you can chain combos with different weapons that have synergy with each other. Mid hook precision bolt for a quick headshot, rocket launcher precision bolt to maximize damage output, etc. Certain demons are weak to specific weapons. Plasma shields are weak to the plasma rifle. Shooting the shields from the shield guys or from the carcass will make the shield explode, creating a pretty strong area of effect that deals a ton of damage. The remote detonation rocket or frag grenade will stun enemies for a short time upon detonation, giving you an opening to deal even more damage. Demons have weak points for you to shoot to weaken their damage output. The more damage you deal to the demons, the more flesh will drop from their body, giving you a clear indication on how much HP they have left. Dealing enough damage will make a demon enter a glory kill state, one that gives you more HP if you execute it, and setting demons on fire will give you more armor points. Take all of these mechanics into consideration when running through the arena, and Doom Eternal offers one of the greatest gameplay flows I have ever experienced in my whole life. The transitions from shooting all of your ammo into a demon, doing a glory kill animation, and changing back into shooting like a madman is seamless. And that is why I consider its gameplay design, the one from Doom Eternal, a complete masterpiece. Okay. Ultra Kill, while being really similar to the gameplay design of Eternal, takes its own path. The only way to recover HP is by showering on the blood of your enemies while it spills. The amount of HP V1 regenerates depends on the amount of damage you dealt to the bleeding enemy and how close you were to that enemy. There are other ways to recover HP, but taking a bloodbath is the main way to do it. Just like in Doom Eternal, you can chain combos with different weapons to deal a ton of damage, but what separates Eternal from Ultra Kill is how you use your tools to get rid of everything on the arena. Instead of just a quick swapping to deal more damage faster, Ultra Kill lets you combine the utility of weapons in unique ways to deal even more damage damage. You can throw coins into the air and if you shoot them, they ricochet into the closest enemies around. The more coins you throw, the more damage they deal, up to 4. But there's also other ways to deal damage with the coins. You can shoot them with the railgun, parry them with a strike, or use them to parry incoming projectiles. And that's only the things I know of. I know there are other mechanics hidden for me to discover. The one thing I enjoyed the most about Ultra Kill is the parry mechanic. I absolutely love parrying on Dark Souls, so of course I will love parrying on Ultra Kill. You can parry almost everything in this game. Coins, incoming strikes, incoming projectiles. You can even parry your own shotgun shot to make it explode, dealing critical damage. Like in Eternal, Ultra Kill features a grappling hook, but instead of pulling you into the enemies, you pull the enemies to you. You can dash, slide, ground pound to squash enemies or make them jump into the air and a myriad of different things. Combine all of these mechanics into your gameplay and all of a sudden you turn into a violent war machine. When I see a style meter on any game, whether it's a hack and slash or an FPS, it doesn't matter if it actually affects the gameplay depending on your performance, I will try my hardest to get the maximum rank, in this case ultra kill. And in the case of this game, reaching a higher rank will actually help you recover from hard damage. So if you do not want to die, try to play as graceful and efficient as possible. I know that I haven't even scratched the surface on the gameplay design of ultra kill. I haven't even played through act 2. But if one thing is for certain is that this game is really, really hard to get accustomed to. I consider myself to be really good on FPS games but it took me a ton to get accustomed to the mechanics of Ultra Kill. So I can see why this game is not for everyone. It is really hard. But anyways, 
which game is better. For me, Doom Eternal will always be perfection. I just love this game to death. But as of now, the gameplay loop of Ultra Kill has stick its finger up my ass and it doesn't want to let me go. Adding the fact that it has a style meter, a bunch of different, unique and creative ways to use all of the weapons available, and that it asks even more attention from the player in comparison to Doom Eternal. When I played it Doom Eternal for the first time, it took me like, what? an hour to get accustomed to all of the mechanics and after mission 3 or 4 of Doom Eternal I was basically running through the arena killing everything and I was playing on Nightmare. Now compare that to Ultra Kill, a game that I'm playing on normal difficulty and I haven't even beaten goddamn Gabriel. I've died like 50 times to Gabriel and I just can't, and I just can't kill him. Help me. I just can see very clearly why this game is the highest rated FPS game of all time on Steam. In just two years, Ultra Kill has become a colossal hit. And no wonder why. This game is fucking awesome. As of the recording of this video, if you ask me to play Doom Eternal or Ultra Kill, I will 100% choose Ultra Kill because this game just captivates me a ton. Its gameplay design, the aesthetics of the graphics, I played PlayStation 1 for years, I mean, I'm really accustomed to that aesthetic, and especially the lore. I've been reading all of the terminals, watching videos, explaining or trying to explain the lore, and I'm just like, Hakita, what the, what the fuck are you doing? This is so cool, this is so good. For me, Ultra Kill and Doom Eternal are just literal perfection, so take that as you will. Thank you so much for watching this video.